hun. What are you doing? Oh, hey, babe. I'm just super frustrated because fish and wildlife are coming after us reptile hobbyists again. And that's why since my very first video, I've been begging everybody they need to join US SARC. But I don't know. You ever get the impression sometimes that people just aren't listening to you? Babe? Babe? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so close to solving today's wordle. Go ahead. Oh, dear God. Anyway, listen, there's power in numbers, and it's far more impressive if US Arc has 250,000 members as opposed to 2,500 members. So people need to join US Arc. In addition to that, they also need to contact their state senators. They need to, you know, call them and even write them letters because what these state senators are trying to do right now is create a whitelist. And once a species gets added to that whitelist, there's a pretty good chance we're never going to be able to keep them in the hobby again. Oh, okay, so you're trying to stop the whitelist. Oh, oh, hell no. I'm trying to get Carpondros added to it. Hello, and welcome to video number 33. Happy so, birthday! Oh, well, thank you very much. I cannot believe I am 39 years old today. Oh, I mean, really? Okay, fine. I'm 49 years old today. Whatever. Uh, okay, hon. Okay, I'm 54 years old today. Oh, it's suddenly, it's okay? We're going to age shame people? Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> okay, anyway. Hey, listen, it is so great to be back because I have been sick for so long. That's why I had to get a video in such a long time and over a month at this point. And I missed you guys and I'm so glad to be back. I got COVID. I got a sinus infection. I got shingles. It was really bad, but the bottom line is I am so happy to be back. Uh, with uh, video number 33. In today's video, we're going to talk about uh, jungle carpets is the first thing I want to jump into. I love jungle carpets. Personally, I think everybody should have a pair of jungle carpets in their collection just because of their temperament, a lot of different reasons. But there's also a couple things I want to go over before you go out and get yourself a pair of jungle carpets, especially uh, in regard to color. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, I'm going to get you caught up on some breeding app updates. I have a lot of stuff going on down here that uh, I have not been able to share with you guys over the past couple months, so I know uh, you'll enjoy seeing some of the reading updates I have going on. And lastly, before we jump into this video, I want to mention Blake Wilson Reptiles. I'm going to show you the shirt. It's Blake Wilson Reptiles. And as you guys know, I do not do sponsorships on this channel, so Blake did not pay me anything. Um, I don't do Patreon, anything like that. If I refer somebody to you guys, it's because I really trust them. And Blake is an importer of reptiles. I know a lot of you guys out there do not like imported reptiles. But if you have the experience, you're looking for some imported reptiles that are represented uh, honestly, I would definitely uh, give Blake a call. He has some great quality animals. He brings in Bowens pythons, a lot of monitor lizards. He calls himself the scrub daddy. He gets a lot of scrub pythons. So I'm going to put a link on the bottom of this video to uh, Blake Wilson Reptiles, and you can give Blake a call. And he's just a great guy, and I, I really stand behind him. And and I love what he's doing with uh, bringing some quality imported uh, reptiles into the country. Hey guys, I'm so excited to tell you about jungle carpets today. I love jungles. I think personally every collection have a, should have a pair of jungle carpets in here. And before I get started, as you know, I don't make these videos by myself. I have a lot of support. I contact a lot of you out there for help and support before I talk about a certain species. And in this case, I contacted Riley Jimison. Uh, Riley's a longtime breeder. He does carpet pythons, papuan pythons. He does crebos. And uh, he has a great YouTube channel as well. So you should give it a Check it out. I'll uh, put a link to Riley's video on the bottom of my video. Um, so why don't we just jump into uh, carpet pythons? I think the most confusing thing about jungle carpet pythons is that when you start looking for them, you're going to see tons of babies available from many different lines. And prices are all over the place. You're going to see them for $125 a piece. You're going to see them as much as five or $600 a piece for young animals. And uh, regardless of the line, regardless of the age of the baby, and regardless of the price, the first thing you have to say to the seller is, hey, I want to see pictures of your adults. That's going to really tell you the story. I don't care about the line. I mean, yeah, lines are important. We're going to go over that in a second. I'm going to uh, ramble off. There's like nine or ten lines of uh, jungle carpets out there. But again, just ask to see what the parents look like because what happens with uh, jungle carpets specifically is um, being Morelia, they look the best at about, say, 10 months to, say, 16 months of age. And that's a lot of times as people are posting pictures of their animals, they'll post them at that age because that's when they look the best. However, at, as time goes on, they will muddy up. The lines that are not as pure, not as nice, they will muddy up. So you see this animal has nice bright and yellow. She's like a three-year-old animal. Um, she has no tan in her whatsoever. She's crisp. She's black and yellow. Um, she's a great animal, and she's going to produce really pretty babies. But um, you just want to make sure, again, you ask to see pictures of the adults. That's not an out-of-line question, okay? So if you're a newer herper, don't think you're asking anything strange to the seller by saying, hey, you see pictures of your adults, because that's really going to tell you the story. So let's just start there. Let's, uh, seeing pictures of the adults is the most important thing, and now let's get, get into lines. <music> 
Hey, so along with Riley, we came up with nine total lines of jungle carpet pythons, and I'm sure there are more out there you guys can put in the comments if I'm forgetting some, but I'm talking about here in the U.S. So there's the WOW line, there's the Python Pete line, there's the Highlighter line, there's the Casey Lasik line, the Larry Black line, Python Pete line, David Haston line, that's the animal I just showed you. I have a trio of David Haston animals. I, that's personally my favorite line. Uh, the Shuett line and the Andrew Hare line. And again, these are all solid lines of animals that produce some beautiful bright yellow and black babies. The only thing is, just like with diamond pythons that I talked about in my last video, is you just really have to know who you're buying them from. I mean, people a lot of times are going to be honest with you, but sometimes somewhere along the lines, like you may say, hey, that's a beautiful highlighter line animal, and you're buying it as a baby, but what you don't know is that somewhere along the line, somebody crossed that highlighter line with a, a coastal carpet or an inland carpet. And uh, again, that's why I go back to what I said earlier. It's important to look at the, pic the uh, check out pictures of the adults because, you know, regardless of what line they tell you it is, uh, just to make sure that those lines are pure, the picture of the adult is going to tell you everything you need to know. And let's talk about husbandry with jungle carpets. Another reason I think they're just such amazing animals to have in your collection. As far as husbandry, I would rate them a, on a scale of one to three with uh, one being the easiest to keep. I would rank them a one as far as a python to keep. Uh, husbandry is pretty basic. You can give them a hot spot anywhere from 84 to 88 degrees. Um, as far as the cool side, you keep them anywhere from the high 70s to low 80s on the cool side. As far as feeding, um, I mean, even as babies, they uh, really seem to take off readily. Small mice, uh, rat pinks, they take off. Um, I think the one thing people do wrong with uh, jungle carpets is they tend to overfeed them because their feeding response is so strong that they uh, just tend to overfeed the animals, and that's what we don't want. Um, as far as a substrate, newspaper, or some kind of whatever paper seems to work best, I know people use pine shavings or they use aspen, but I love newspaper. I know R uh, Riley uses paper as well. And as far as humidity, I mean a decent sized water bowl in the enclosure. I've never had a problem with my uh, carpets, uh, jungle carpets not shedding. So I think just a normal sized croc style dish, or I use the kitty litter pans here for my uh, uh, chondros. It seems to keep enough relative humidity in the enclosure. As far as sizes, guys, I mean a large male jungle carpet might be, I don't know, six feet, six and a half feet, something in that area. Um, I'm sorry, female, six feet, six to six and a half feet. My male's probably about four and a half to five feet. Um, so again, I just think they're awesome animals. Everybody should have them in their collection. I think they really rival ball pythons. I always said if there's another species of animal uh, besides ball python to take on that, you know, that popularity, it might be a jungle carpet, because, or I should say carpet pythons in, in general, just due to the fact that um, there's so many color variations available. I think what holds them back is they just tend to get a little bit larger than ball pythons, longer than ball pythons. And uh, the other thing is uh, temperament. You know, a lot of baby jungles, a lot of small carpets, the feeding response is really strong. They tend to be a little bit snappy. But I promise you, as your animal matures and it puts age on and it puts size on, uh, they're really uh, calm down and they're quite tractable animals. So if you don't have some jungle carpets in your uh, collection right now, uh, why don't you uh, please consider getting some. Hey, so I want to get you guys caught up on my breeding activity this year. I'm, my season's pretty late. I'm behind most of you guys out there. Um, just because I don't usually start even shutting my stuff down till uh, January. Just because uh, November and December here in New Jersey, it's just been so mild compared to how it's been in previous years. So I never fight the outdoor temps, and I wait for it to get nice and cold outside before I start cycling my animals. But So what am I hoping for this year? Well, I'm hoping for uh, green tree python babies. I've had a lot of activity there. Uh, my my 18-year-old female has been locked up nonstop, so I have my fingers crossed for her. There's a, a pure Manikwari pair. I'm hoping for jungle carpets. In fact, that female jungle I just pulled out to show you, that David Hastings girl, um, I believe she's, knock on wood, I believe she's gravid right now. I'm definitely feeling follicles in her. Um, I shouldn't say gravid. A lot of follicles. She's been locked up nonstop to another David Hastings animal. Um, so keep my fingers crossed there. Um, Savu pythons, again, fingers crossed. Um, I'm just getting going with my Savu group right now. I'm just starting to do introductions on them. I'm still feeding really heavily on them, but I'm hoping to have some Savus this year, both normals pet for silvers, as well as visual silvers. So um, if you're looking for those animals, just stay in touch. And with uh, any luck in the next few months, I'll have some of those available. But the uh, creme de la creme, as they say, are my eastern Sanzinia. This is one of my females who's been locked up nonstop. I definitely feel follicles in her. 
Um, she's continuing to feed. There's another female I have as well that um, has breeding for, been breeding for me nonstop. So I don't know. They're smaller guys than I want. She's a, she's a, uh, a three and a half year old animal. My other girl is uh, four and a half years old. Um, they're doing great. Um, they're feeding, they're breeding, and like I said, we're just going to uh, keep your fingers crossed for me that we get some baby green sins in this year because that, as you can imagine, would absolutely make my season. Hey, and before I leave you guys today, this is a pure male manaquari that I recently picked up. And you guys are always calling me, asking me where you can get green tree pythons. Believe me, if I knew, I would tell you, I'm having a difficult time getting myself, especially pure manaquari animals. This one was produced by my friend Vitaly Romanoff um, from Vritis Pythons. Vitaly's been around for a long time, and I feel very fortunate to have uh, purchased this mail from him. Um, I'm always looking to add uh, pure manaquari, new bloodlines to my collection. So again, I'm just really pumped to have this guy. He is last year's baby, as you can see. He is currently going through his onogenic color change. Um, U.S. Ark, guys, I know I'm a broken record. You can accuse me. I know I sound like a broken record. It's five bucks a month. What do I got to do to beg you guys to join U.S. Ark? Um, it allows, they allow us to keep the animals in uh, the way that we're currently keeping them. And as people keep attacking us, fish and game and state laws, uh, it's just more important now than ever that you jump on the bandwagon of U.S. Ark. So that's pretty much it. And uh, thanks for sticking with me. And I look forward to seeing everybody in two weeks. Who has the best YouTube channel? Me?